Nicole, the math lady, and today we're here to learn about equivalent fractions. Equivalent fractions, what does that mean? Well, I've got an example for you, and it involves one of my favorite things, pizza. All right, so let's say it's Friday night, I've decided to order a pizza, and I've got four people in my family, my husband, myself, my daughter, and my son. So I order a pizza, and I tell them, just divide it in four pieces. That's because we each are going to just take our section. They say, okay. They just do it in four pieces. So here's our pizza pie. And then there's a knock at the door. And it turns out that my family has come to visit, but they are unannounced. So my brother, his wife, and their two kids come. And they're like, oh, we're kind of hungry. Can we have some pizza? Really? Really? You're eating my pizza? It's okay. I'm all about sharing. So we take our four pizza, our four slices, and we divide them again. Okay, and now we have, instead of four pieces of pizza, we have eight. Now notice, the piece that I was going to have before, I was going to have this entire piece of pizza before. But that same section of pizza, you know, originally was called one-fourth. But now that same section of pizza is called two eighths because it's out, it's two pieces now out of eight total. Before it was one piece out of four total. But it's the same thing. These are what we call equivalent fractions. But how did we move from one fourth to two eighths? Well, I'm going to show you. If you take one fourth and you multiply it by the same number on the top and on the bottom. Let's multiply it by 2. What do we get? 1 times 2 is 2. 4 times 2 is 8. Well, look at that. 1 fourth equals 2 eighths. Okay. What if there's another knock on the door and my neighbor's across the street? My friend Cindy, her husband Sheldon, and their two kids come and they're like, ah, we didn't eat dinner. Do you have anything? And I said, you know, I'm all about sharing, so we're going to cut this pizza pie up a little bit more. All right, so instead of, uh, you know, 12, we're going to go a little more. Actually, not even just them. My other neighbors want some, too. It's just a free-for-all. So we're going to cut it one more time. Here we go. Ooh. How many pieces do we have now? Oh, that wasn't so straight. Okay. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So before, it was 1 fourth, but now this one section is 1, 2, 3, 4 out of the 16. Well, how did we get from 1 fourth to 4 sixteenths? 1 fourth times 4 over 4 equals four sixteenths. So it seems that we can have equivalent fractions by multiplying the numerator and the denominator, but it has to be the same number. Two over two, three over three, five over five, nine over nine. And it's the same number. It stays an equivalent fraction. Let's take a look at this. So I have five sevenths equals what number over 35? See, I want to take my five sevenths and I want to find an equivalent fraction with a denominator of 35. Well, if I write it out, I need 5 sevenths times some fraction is going to give me a number over 35. Well, 7 times what is 35? Oh, 7 times 5 is 35. Let's write that in red. Now, the principle of math, what you do to the bottom, You've got to do to the top. Okay, it's not really a principle. It's an Nicoleism, but that's how my brain thinks. you got to be fair. What you do to the bottom, you've got to do to the top. So if I multiply the bottom by 5, I've got to multiply the top by 5. Here we go. 5 times 5 is 25. So 5 sevenths is 25 over 35. Let's try another one. 2 thirds equals what number over 15? Well, let's think. Two-thirds times what fraction is going to give me something over 15? Well, three times five is 15. What you do to the bottom, you've got to do to the top. Five times two is 10. So our equivalent fraction is 10 over 15.
Here we have one third equals seven over what number? Well, if we write it out, one third, whoops, times some fraction is going to give me seven over some number. Well, what times what times uh, what number times one is going to give me seven? Ah, that's going to be the number seven. And what you do to the top, you must do to the bottom. That's right. So. 3 times 7 is now going to be 21. That's your equivalent fraction. So again, the key to equivalent fractions, again, you can go either direction. You just got to multiply the top times the bottom. And sometimes you don't even have to write it out like this. You could do mental math. Think about it. I could say 1 times what number is 7? And you would know, ah, 7. And what you do to the bottom, you got to do to the top. So 3 times 7 is 21. I could skip writing this whole thing down. You don't trust me? Watch. Watch. What if I said uh, 2 thirds equals something over 60? Question mark. 3 times what is 60? 3 times 20 is 60. What you do to the bottom, you got to do to the top. 2 times 20 is 40. So my question mark turns into a 40. My equivalent fraction is 40 over 60, and I did it all in my head. That's because you're smart. All right, that's it. Equivalent fractions. Love them. I think you'll love them too. Go try a few practice problems. I'm Nicole the Math Lady, and I'll see you later. Bye. Mm -hmm.